Okay, can I start? Do I need mic? Do I need a mic? Okay, cool. <coughs> Hi everyone and welcome to One Year with Hanami. Uh, my name is Grzegorz, but for obvious reasons, people call me Greg. I work for a company called uh, Caligo Solutions. We're based in Singapore and Manila. Now, uh, I believe that most of you know what Hanami is. Uh, so the word comes from Japanese language and it is a long-standing tradition of welcoming spring where Japanese people go together to park in the middle of the day, sit down, drink a beer, and just watch and enjoy the flowers blossoming. Uh, this name, this word, was inspiration for, uh, for the name of the Ruby framework that was created, I believe, four years ago by uh, Luca Guidi, who's a, who's a Ruby developer. Initially, he called his framework Lotus. After some time, he, he decided to change it to Hanami. Uh, so this Japanese word, because Mats is from Japan, Ruby is from Japan, this was the inspiration for the, for the name of the framework. So very brief introduction about the framework because I believe that even though I think most of the people in the Ruby community heard something about Hanami, they don't know really what it is. So Hanami is a so-called fully featured web framework, as in that's how they call it on their own website. What it means is that it's not just related to web, but it also gives you the libraries, the code to deal with other stuff like databases, like sending emails, like some, uh, some additional utilities. So it's not only web as in take the request and, and respond, it's also additional stuff that is commonly used in web applications. A uh, second thing is that Hanami is a modular framework. Uh, you can take any of the Hanami's libraries, any of the gems, uh, there is around 10 of them, and you can just use it separately uh, in your application without relying on the, less, uh, on the rest of the library. Uh, third thing is that Hanami is lightweight. Uh, it's lightweight in terms of performance, at at least that's what the website says. Like I didn't have, I don't have any experience with the performance issues with Hanami, so I cannot really verify it. However, it's lightweight in terms of the amount of code. So it is relatively short. It is most of the most of the lines of uh, of files that you will see there are comments uh, that uh, that help help document the the libraries, uh, and it's quite easy to read. Uh, yeah. So the last thing is that Hanami promotes good practices, like it, uh, it puts testability of the code as priority, it puts modularity, uh, it puts good engineering practice like dependency injection, etc., as the priority. Uh, I will talk more about it uh, in a few minutes. Now, uh, I have a production experience uh, with Hanami. So uh, the, one of the teams at Caligo started working on a new product, and the long story short is that we chose Hanami because we wanted to choose something familiar. We didn't want to learn the new language. We didn't want to go for something that we could be afraid that at some point we will find a problem that we cannot solve. Uh, but also we didn't want to choose uh, any obvious option like Sinatra or Rails. We wanted to choose something that we haven't tried yet. So the middle of this exploration and familiarity is, uh, was, was Hanami for us. Now we started working on our first Hanami application more than one and a half year ago. Uh, it was around January 2017. Uh, so one year with Hanami is actually a bit more, but we have one year of production experience with Hanami. So after six months of starting the first project, we launched it in production. Uh, we started working with the framework by then, so we started quickly working on the second application. Uh, and the last update for us was March this year. We updated our uh, libraries, uh, our applications to Hanami 1.1. The current version of Hanami, I believe, is 1.3, or the current release candidate is 1.3. Uh, yeah, Jeff says that it's 1.2, so maybe, maybe that's the last one. I think 1.3 is in the beta stage. Uh, so we haven't upgraded our applications to 1.2 yet. So if there are any questions about how, how, how it's changed since 1.1, I cannot really tell you. OK, so I will be talking about Hanami in four different parts. Uh, because the, the framework itself consists of, of 10 different libraries, I decided to split this talk so, uh, so that I can tell you a bit about what we like about each part and what we don't like. So the first will be the web part, then the data part, then application, which will wrap the whole experience with Hanami, and the last will be support, which will include the like utility gems and some ecosystem of Hanami. Uh, I will be talking about the things that we like, and for this I will use green color on the screen, and for the ones that we think could be improved, uh, I will be using red color. Now, so let's start with the web. Uh, this part will consist of four gems. 
Uh, so the first gem is a router. Router basically takes HTTP request and it directs it to certain controller. There is nothing really special about it, so I will skip this, uh, skip this gem. You just need to know that it does what it should do. It's kind of like a Rails router. It, you put your routes in a separate file. It's not Hanami style where you put the path in the name of the method. It's just, uh, it's a separate file. Then second gem is controller, which takes the HTTP request and it responds with the rack format. So it gives you an array with the HTTP code, the body and the headers. The third is the view, which is an object that encapsulates the logic that will go back to the user. Uh, and the last one is helper that helps with formatting code with stuff like, uh, I don't know, currencies, numbers, uh, strings, etc. So now the first thing that, uh, that we really like in Hanami is the fact that one controller action is one class. So unlike Rails, you do not put common actions together in one file in one controller. Just one action uh, is one class. That makes it e really easy to test. Uh, the code is a bit cut, but basically how you call an action in Hanami is that you create a new object of the action. So you do action.new, and then you call the method called call with the parameters that you want to pass there. So uh, if you work with Rails, then you know that to test controllers, you need to make kind of a fake HTTP request. You cannot just initialize controller. If you call, I don't know, users controller.new, it will throw an error that you cannot initialize it. Uh, so in Hanami, the actions, the controller actions are just normal objects that you can create. You run one function of them, you just define one function, and it gives you a, a result. So the basic structure of your application will look something like this. Uh, you have the directory called apps, then you have the name of your app, uh, then you've got controllers, and each uh, resource is a directory here. So if I want to have two actions, uh, index and create for orders, I will have direct directory called orders, and then action called index, which is one file, action called create, uh, which is another file. Now, the problem with the actions, uh, the controllers in Hanami is that they are a bit magical. As in, the only thing that you need to do in Hanami uh, to, to create controller is just create a file and put the function called call that takes the params that are uh, passed, uh, passed from, the, from the client. So now, the problem is that, you see my method here returns a string that says this is action. But if I call my method, if I call index.new.call, then it doesn't return the string, this is action. So now the question is, what happens there? I have a function called call, I call this function, and it doesn't return the string that I return. So this is the magic that, uh, that Hanami provides. Basically what happens is that it wraps your response in this array of three elements, the, which is uh, HTTP code, then headers, and then body. So if you want to customize the body or status, you have to use a method. Uh, status, then you provide HTTP code and the body, or you have, to, uh, you have to modify the accessors. You have to modify the body and the status of your HTTP response. Why I don't like it? Uh, this is because I need to rely on a on mutable state here. So uh, the action itself, to, to return something, I need to modify the body of this action. Uh, and Hanami, as the framework that promotes good engineering practices, also promotes immutability of the objects. But the actions, the controller actions, are kind of in contrary to do that. Uh, so I believe that it would be easier if we just return the, uh, some result object from this call method. Uh, and that, uh, that would be this array in the end. Uh, so yeah, that was the second thing. Uh, now the third thing about the web part is that views are not templates. This might be confusing at first if, you've been, if you have been working only with Ruby on Rails uh, uh, as a Ruby framework. So in Rails, uh, you put lots of logic in your templates. Uh, and the place when you want to extract that logic from a template, the place to do it is a helper. Now the problem with helpers is that they are included in all the views that you have. So for example, if I define a method called, I know, name in the user's helper, I can call it in order's helper. I can, uh, sorry, in, or, in order's view. I can, uh, I can call it in any view. So basically helpers in Rails are like this one big, huge dump that everything that goes to any of them, it ends up being included in all the views. Uh, this makes it very difficult to maintain, uh, to maintain separa uh, separation between, the, between your views. So 
in Hanami, the view is actually an object that contains the logic, and this object is available for the template. The template is a JSON or HTML or whatever you want, and the ideal template in Hanami shouldn't contain any logic. It shouldn't have any, I don't know, any formatting, any SQL queries, any calling to the models. It should just call the functions that you make available in the view. So this is an example. I've got a class called index. It's called the, uh, the same as my controller class, except that it's a view. So I include the view module there. I define a method called users age, and then I only call this method in my template. So this is kind of an ideal template in, in Hanami philosophy. It shouldn't contain logic. It should just call the functions that are available to it in the view. And I cannot call the user's age in a template uh, that belongs to orders or some other resource. This method is only available in this particular template. If I want to have some shared methods, then I need to extract them to a separate module, and I need to include them in different, in different view objects. So this is something that we really, we really enjoy in Hanami because it forces us to have a good separation between the logic and the, and the presentation. Uh, another good thing about the web part is that built-in helpers are private. So Hanami has this gem called helpers that gives you stuff like format number, for example. Uh, and these helpers are not public methods. You cannot call format number in the template directly. You have to do, you have to add a public method in your view, and then only there you can use this helper. So I'm not entirely sure if all the helpers are private, but the guidelines say that you shouldn't use these helpers directly in your object. So here's an example. Uh, you see, I've got the format number that comes from the helpers, uh, helpers gem, and I do not put format number in my template. I just put total cost, and this, this method uses the private helper uh, that is, uh, that is format number. Okay, so again, we do not put logic into the template, we just call the methods that are, uh, that are in the view. Now, this makes it, this in combination with the previous part, makes it very easy to test your views. Because to test your view, you do not open the page and you do not use any HTML scraper to check whether your, whether your content is there. You test the view as a normal Ruby object and because you do not put any logic in the template, the template that doesn't have to be tested because it is just displaying the, uh, the methods that you can already test. Okay, time for the second part, the data. Uh, I think that's normally the most interesting part because it includes the model, which is always uh, somehow controversial and it causes some heated discussions. So Hanami has a gem called model that helps you uh, interacting with the database, the collections, and in general data flow. It has the gem called validations that is separate from the database validations. I will talk about it in a moment. And it has an experimental gem called events that is supposed to uh, help you with producing and consuming events. It is experimental because it doesn't have an official release yet. I only saw the repository and checked uh, more or less how it works, but I don't have any real experience with this gem. So I will. I will not be talking about it, I just wanted to mention it as something that will be probably an uh, official part of Hanami framework at some point. Okay, so the first great thing about the data part is that Hanami uses repository pattern as in, in opposition to, to some other patterns that you can have in the database like uh, data mapper or active record. Repository pattern forces you to separate collection of objects from the object itself. So you will not have one class called order, which will have scopes so that you can uh, query, the, query the database and with uh, instance methods that you can call on a single object. No, these things are entirely separate. So repository itself is not necessarily tied to a database. Repository is, col is, is a collection of objects. It can be an array, it can be a flat file. Uh, the storage doesn't matter. It's like, it just means that you have collection, that collection of entities but the entity itself is a separate class. So for example, I've got other repository uh, that defines some associations and that, de that defines the scopes. Uh, so for example, I can call order repository new dot future and it will take the orders uh, that, w that uh, will be delivered in the future. Now the order itself is a separate class, it's an entity, it is mapped to order repository 
because uh, of the class names. So if I say order repository, it will know that when I want to have uh, fetch some orders, it will use the class called order to create these entities. But they are, but they are separate concepts in Hanami. Uh, also, an interesting thing is that the where method is private. You cannot call orders.where outside of this class. So it doesn't give you it doesn't give you access to the database. Like from outside of this repository, you cannot interact with the database. If you want to define certain interaction, like fetching the future orders or past orders, etc., you have to add new public method. This makes it very clear in what ways other classes are, uh, are able to interact with the database. Uh, be, without it, if the method dot where or some similar methods are public, then you don't know who queries the database in what way, because everyone can do it in any way they want. So here you, you just give a very clear interface of what, what queries are available outside of this class. Uh, the not so good part about uh, Hadami model is that it relies on another library that is called RomarB that relies on another library called SQL that is interacting with the database. So why is it, it why is it not good? Is that each of these libraries have different uh, have different abstraction? So SQL library is the lowest level of abstraction. You can use SQL library to almost generate a raw SQL. Now ROMRB is higher level. It doesn't generate the SQL directly. Uh, but because of that, it has a bit limited capabilities. And the same with the Hanami model, which is on top of the ROMRB. Its capabilities are even more limited. Now, this thing changed from version 1.0 to, uh, to 1.1, but we still have situations where we cannot use Hanami model to fetch the data that we want from the database. So we need to go one layer down. And then it appears that ROMRB also might not support what we need. So then we go one layer down. And this causes a lot of confusion because you never know which layer of abstraction you should be using at the moment. Uh, and that makes it also difficult for developers because if you want to make some complex query, you might be reading documentation of three different libraries uh, to find the solution for your problem. Now, validations. Uh, validations in Hanami are a separate gem and are a separate concept from, from storage or from controller or Basically, they are a mixing that you can include anywhere in your application, and you can validate the parameters that you are passing uh, to the class that includes these validations mixing. So you can use the same gem to validate, to perform the, data, uh, the database validations, to validate the data that will go to the database, and you can use the same gem to validate the params that are coming from the, from the user, from HTTP request. Okay, so an example is, uh, I've got one controller that is called create, and I define params. This is just a sugar syntax for the Hanami validations. And I said that I require title to be a string and I require amount to be an integer. And then I can include Hanami validations in my other class, which is a service object. And I just say validations do, and I use the same DSL for defining my validations. This is awesome because you can define your validations in any place of the application, whether it's a service object or controller or the entity anywhere. Basically, validations are not tied to the database. They are just tied to, I, I don't know, I think that they are, you need to pass a hash there to be, uh, to be validated, and that's it. Okay, now time for part three, which is the whole application, and here we'll be talking about two gems. The first gem is called Hanami, and it's a application gem. So this is the whole framework that consists of all these gems that I mentioned before and a few more. And it also adds the, the concept of application. So if you want to use any of other Hanami gems, you can use them separately. But this gem, except for including all the other ones, it also gives you the concept of application. And it, con it provides a lot of configuration for you. It helps you build the application in an easier way. Uh, and the second gem, this is something that I won't be talking about. It's CLI. It just gives you generators for migrations, models, applications, stuff like that. Uh, it's not very interesting. It just that's what you expect it to do. It just helps you generate the code in, a, in an easy way. Okay, so first great thing about the Hanami gem itself is that the mountable applications are first class citizens. If you work with Rails, you know the concept of Rails engines that were added around, I know, like seven years after Rails were, uh, the framework was created. So 
by default in Rails you've got one application and then if, if it's too complex, if you want to separate different concepts, then you can add mountable applications that are called engines. Uh, in Hanami, the mountable applications were built into the framework almost since the beginning. So using multiple applications in Hanami is not a special case. It's just by default you, can, you have multiple applications. The, the fact that you might have only one application because you don't need more, this is a special case. So what it provides is that the multiple applications are not special in any way. There is no difference whether you're working with one or multiple applications. The whole framework is built uh, on the concept of supporting multiple applications. So you will not be fighting against the, uh, the limitations that Rails engines might have. So uh, yeah, the structure of the application by default, you have that directory called apps and by default you have an inside directory called web, but you can add any other applications that you want. Each application has a separate controller, separate views. Uh, I think they have uh, yeah, separate configuration. Uh, and if you want to have some shared code, you just put it in lib directory instead of apps directory. So for example, Caligo, uh, all our repositories, all our entities and some shared libraries are just put in lib and config controllers, views, etc., cetera, are, pulled in, uh, are put into separate, separate apps. Uh, I think assets also can go to, uh, like style sheets, JavaScript, etc. also go to separate applications. Uh, the thing that I don't like that much about Hanami is that the gem Hanami is not very modular. So the, the, the Hanami ecosystem, it is. All these gems, I can use them separately. But if I want to build Hanami application and use Hanami gem, it will come with all the other gems, I, I think except for the model. So even if I don't need mailers, uh, it will be in my gem file log. Even if I don't need assets, even if I don't need views, because I just want, I know, I want to use only controller, it will still be, uh, these gems will still be there. So this is not bad per se, because in most of the frameworks are, have it this way. I consider it a problem because Hanami promises the modularity, and this modularity is limited. So if I want to use the controller gem itself, I can, but if I want to use controller and view and that's it, then I have to write the whole application from scratch. And if I decide to instead use the Hanami application, then it comes with all the seven or, or more gems included. Uh, on the other hand, a very good thing in the framework is that it promotes good practices. So I already mentioned separation of layers, like validations are separate from the storage. Views are separate from the templates and separate from the helpers. Uh, Hanami promotes practices like making as much code as you, as you can private, so that you define very clear interfaces of how the classes can interact uh, with each other. Uh, making code easy to test is one of the prior, priority, priorities for the Hanami core team. Uh, so the classes are very easy, controller actions, view objects are very easy to instantiate and to test. Uh, yeah, so this is something that it's extremely good feeling to know that the framework that you are using promotes the good practices. Well, your code, of course, still can be a spaghetti code, but Hanami makes it easy to write good code. It makes it more difficult to make a mess. So you still can do that, but you do not need to fight the framework to use the good practices. It just, it helps you with that. Okay, now time for the last part, which is support. And here we've got two gems. A uh, gem called Mailer does exactly what you expect it to do. It sends emails. It has some simple GS, uh, DSL to define the recipient, to define the SMTP settings, etc. but nothing more than that. And the gem called Utils, that's more interesting. And uh, there, are a few, there are a few reasons why it's so interesting. First is that this gem doesn't monkey patch Ruby. Uh, so all the classes, like if Hanami core team wants to add a method to string, they have their own module called string. Initially it was a class that wrapped the, the string that you had. Right now it's a module. So you, you do not uh, call the method on the object, you just call the method on the module and pass your string as the first argument. Uh, this is great because if libraries that you use commonly, monkey patch Ruby, then you start getting lost in like which method is the Ruby method, which is the method of the framework. Uh, monkey patching of the framework might cause a lot of issues. Imagine that one of your gem that you're using in your application relies on some other gem that relies on some other gem that relies on active support that monkey patches like 20 different classes. This is 
something that if you, if you work with Rails, you just get used to active support. But if some other gem deep in your dependencies depends on monkey patching, then this is very confusing because this is not your code that monkey patches Ruby. It's something that you accidentally have uh, on your list of dependencies. So I really appreciate that there is no monkey patching in the Hanami framework. Uh, one of the great things that utils gem provides is interactors. These are basically service objects that help you to have standard way of defining the, the domain layer, uh, the services layer. So this gem is not really great. I, I, I'm not a huge fan, but I like the fact that there is a way, a standard way in Hanami to deal with the service layers. Very few frameworks uh, do that. So why, I, why I'm not a huge fan of it is that uh, interactors are similar to actions, as in to, to return a value, you need to modify the state of your current object. Uh, here's an example. I've got a class that's called create user. I have a method called call. And to return some user from that, I need to, I need to modify the instance variable called, called user, and I need to expose it uh, via expose method. So this is not that bad because the, this state, this at user, this variable is not available from the outside uh, on, this, on this create user class. Uh, so you only modify private state. So it's not that bad, but still for a framework that promotes so many good practices, uh, I believe that it could be done via returning explicitly uh, some result object. And the last thing, uh, this is not a problem with the framework itself, but this is a problem that you will find when you start working with Hanami. The ecosystem is small. If you want to have authentication added to Hanami, there are a few options. Probably none of them is generic enough for you, so you will write your own library that you will release it as an open source, but it will not be generic enough because it will be just for you. So then people will have four options and still they will be writing their own solutions. So there is just no very good authentication library. Uh, we were working with Webpack, I believe, some time ago, and the only library that helped uh, to deal with Webpack in Hanami was limited to one application per repository. And as I said before, the Hanami is built around the concept of multiple, multiple applications. So having multiple applications wanted to use Webpack, we had to write our own solution. So again, uh, the Hanami core team does a really great job with the framework, uh, but only so much depends on them. So, the ecosystem is still small, the, gr the popularity of Hanami is growing, but if you want to build application that will rely on lots of, uh, I don't know, external APIs and you don't want to write your own integrations, you will, find, uh, you will find it very slow for you to develop the application. Okay, so to sum up, uh, at Caligo we are very happy with the Hanami framework. We've got two applications running in production. They are, some of them are pure APIs, some of them are using views. Uh, we had to write quite a bit of our own code, some boilerplate code, but overall we are very happy. Uh, so I believe that you can use Hanami for most of the web applications that we are planning to develop, uh, and even some non-web applications. As in, you will not use the controller gem if you're not writing web application, but you can use the model gem or the mailers gem or, or, or some other libraries. Uh, on the other hand, if you want to build application that will rely heavily on external libraries, probably you should reconsider. Uh, if you're writing a project with lots of complex database queries, you, you should probably reconsider because you will, be, you will find yourself juggling between three different layers of database abstractions. Uh, and if you write simple CRUD applications, probably you could use something that will help you generate almost all the code because, well, it's just going to be a simple CRUD application, right? Uh, yeah, so that's it. As I mentioned in the beginning, I work for a company called Caligo Solutions. We are using Hanami, Rails, Elixir, and some other stuff, and we're hiring developers in Singapore and Manila. Uh, people call me Greg, but my real name is Grzegorz, and you've just listened to one wonderful year with Hanami. Thank you. <laughs> questions time. We have some rewards for, for, for people who have questions. What is that? It's a mouse pad from JetBrains. Nobody? Can I ask myself a question? No? Jeff, go ahead. What's been your biggest challenge integrating uh, interactors, which I understand you have mixed experience with, into the rest of the Hanami application? Specifically in terms of things like error reporting and validation. Uh, 
because, so, the, yeah. because, because the conceptual models mm -hmm. for, for error checking are, are so different. So, say you've got a controller action mm -hmm. that calls an interactor yes. to do its business logic, mm -hmm. and the interactor, the interactor deals with a confluence of at of inputs to produce the result. And, mm -hmm. so, and so errors that are reported might not depend on any single on any single attribute. Like if you're in Hanami validations on the Prems block in mm -hmm. your controller action and say your your amount uh, your amount attribute is not an integer that's easy enough. That's easy enough mm -hmm. to deal with. But if you have, let's say you have, uh, pass off to this interactor, and the interactor says, "No, this amount is not allowed because of this other condition." Mm -hmm. Okay, your your interactor your, your interactor has a string error message mm -hmm. that gets sent back to the controller action. Now the controller action has to use the input form or, or and or flash messages mm -hmm. to communicate that error to the user. Mm -hmm. that's, been one, that's been one of our continuing headaches, is what's the best way to do that? I don't know what's the best way really. Uh, I like. So the, the framework itself, the, the Hanami interactors don't help you with that. It's just like, it's a small library that just defines how you interact uh, with, uh, with, with the services. Yes, yeah. So, uh, so I don't think that, like, you know, I don't think that there is a difference whether you're using Hanami interactors or whether you use, I don't know, some uh, dry transaction or whether you use some other library. Uh, the, well, so what we normally do is that our interactors define whatever result object you want, like let's say user or order or whatever, and the errors. And then we just ensure that it can only return the errors that controller can pass further. So basically the Hanami interactor may internally log in some details about the error, but the, the actual error message that it gives back is something that can easily go to the user. So the controller doesn't have to map any error codes from the interactor to the user. Right. Yes, but again, this is not the best solution. This is just something that, from all the things that we've tried, causes us the least number of problems. Yeah, yeah exactly. Still painful though. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, well, I think that it's really good for any kind of web application, like uh, unless, unless you have one of these cases that I mentioned. Uh, I cannot tell you that, oh, it's good for, I don't know, business applications or, or, or stuff like that, uh, because you can develop good code in any other framework. Like you can develop equally good application in Ruby on Rails. Uh, so I don't think that there is any specific use case here. Uh, we are using it for uh, one of the cases that we have is a pure API application that is used by, by multiple clients all over the world. Uh, and the fact that we have separate classes for, for each action uh, and that we have the built, kind of built in interactors layer helps us because from the beginning we knew that we would be having very heavy services layer. Uh, so having a very well defined uh, structure of this layer helped us from the beginning. So if you know that you will be doing more stuff than just, you know, create, update, delete, then probably it's good to use something that already has, or if you want to use another framework like Sinatra Rails, then you should immediately find a good third party library that will help you with this, uh, with this layer. But yeah, in Hanami, you just don't need to look for it. It's already there, so you can immediately start building a heavy, heavy services layer. Yeah, thank you for the question. We're building an app with Konami that uses uh, a, a GUI web app and an API. We have an API that we're, we are bringing up a phone app 
an iOS app that is using our API. And we're using uh, <coughs> we're using CLI stuff in DevOps. And they all use the same models. They all use the same interactors. They all use the same authentication. They all use the same authorization. Okay, it's all been done. That's 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 why we love it. That's why we 90% love it and 10% hate it with a purple flame of passion for rough edges like what we were discussing earlier about about the mismatch and error paradigms. But it is still a very young framework. I mean, Rails has been around for what, 15 years now? 12 years? So, give it another year or two and a lot of the edges will be smoothed up. Oh, that also gives me an idea. Imagine that you have an application where you have API and API has some token authentication and then you have the web part where you have uh, password and session authentication. Uh, and if you use Rails, then in this case, you will have to uh, define the authentication per controller. So you need to know that controllers either in this module or, or just for each controller, you need to define which way of authenticating it uses. In Hanami, you just put it in two separate applications and they have separate configuration. So you well, if, if you put stuff into the API application, it will always use this API authentication. You cannot mix it up because they are kind of like separate projects that are just using some common shared libraries. The other thing yeah. is that the lib directory is intended to be your app that is independent of the delivery mechanism, whether it's, whether it's a web app, an API, a CLI, mm -hmm. what have you. Like you may have read about six, seven years ago, there was there were these bunch of articles talking about how you should vendor everything, make your whole app a bunch of gems. Mm -hmm. Well, the whole point of the lib directory in Hanami is you can turn around and turn that into any kind you like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, we ah. just, uh, Sorry, sure. Any further yeah. discussions offline because we're eating into the next. Right, right. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you, Megosh. No worries. Thanks. How do I turn it off? Yes.